Hi, everyone. Um, so we're going to be starting with our meeting today. Like I said in the chat, um, the other girls had some uh, last minute issues come up. So we're only having one presentation today. Um, so Lexi, I think you should be co-host. And if you want to go ahead and start, that's totally fine. OK, cool. I will pull up my presentation and share my screen. All right, sounds good. Um, just to let everyone know, we did send out officer election form earlier. So I hope you guys got a chance to fill that out. And also um, SJC winter mentorship flyer and sign up sheet should be going out soon. So please look out for that. Um, and if you guys know anyone who's interested in getting, getting started with SJC or getting um, started with research, please forward it to them and let them know because it's a really good opportunity. Um, and then if you have previous experience in research and you want to be a mentor, please reach out to us at stemjournalclub at gmail.com. And Lexi, you're good to start. Thank you. All right. Uh, can everyone hear me OK? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right. So I'm Lexi, and, and uh, my presentation is on is diabetic retinopathy genetically inheritable? And I looked at this study that was called Candidate Genes for Poor Proliferative Diabetic Retinopathy by Daniel Petrovic. And so first things first, what you need to know is what diabetic retinopathy is. And basically it happens to about 50% of diabetics. And it's basically when your high blood sugar um, damages the blood vessels in your retina. And the retina is uh, this kind of middle layer of the eye, which you can see in the diagram. It's labeled over to the right side. And um, it sends the neural signals to the brain, kind of helping you see. So when blood vessels in the retina get damaged, it kind of will make you lose your visual acuity. And so it's harder to see. And um, there's two types of Hey, um, Lexi, we can't hear you. Oh. We can't hear you currently. I don't know if that's just me or other people can't hear you either. Um, I'm sure it's just some technical difficulties or something. So if she can't get back on in the next like five minutes, um, we can just end the meeting. Um, but while that, or I think she's back. But while she is, um, you know, getting her uh, probably Wi-Fi back on, um, I just wanted to let you guys know that no one's running for blog, for the blog post chair. Uh, for elections and everything. So um, there's people running for everything else. Um, if you're interested in being an officer, the blog post position is probably your best bet. And um, I made it so you can guys can go back and edit your submissions if you've already submitted something. So if you wanna add blog post chair, uh, feel free to do that. All right, I'm back, guys. Sorry, my Wi-Fi cut out real quick. No problem. That's so. What we um, yeah, basically, this is. Yeah, <laughs> basically, this is a important parts. And let's see. So here we have um, kind of a schematic of what a normal eye looks like with the blood vessels, and what NPDR and PDR looks like with kind of the blood vessels in the eye. 
So basically what happens with these is that these blood vessels can leak and cause swelling in the macula, which causes blurry vision, or abnormal blood vessels can grow and cause an increased chance of breaking and bleeding, um, which can lead to a retinal detachment, which requires surgery to fix. So that's something that you don't want. So PDR is bad news, basically. And there's ways to treat it, um, which is more of a management thing. So basically there's these anti-VEGF um, injections. And yes, you literally get it injected into your eye. Um, there's different brands and some of them work for some people, some of them don't work. And certain people, none work at all. So some people are unable to manage it with these anti-VEGF treatments. And a lot of the issue in retina is that we don't know why sometimes that doesn't work. So for this research study I looked at, um, they were trying to identify different um, relations between the DR phenotypes and how uh, diabetic macular edema responds to the anti-VEGF treatment and kind of trying to narrow in on some genes that contribute to these different phenotypes. And they looked at um, kind of clinical data and uh, studies of big, big groups of people. And um, we found here in the chart on the right that uh, DME and PDR are not mutually exclusive basically and they're two separate issues. And then on the left, there's another kind of schematic of the blood vessels showing that it's swelling and that would cause an issue in your vision. And the bottom is kind of a scan of the inner eye showing blood that would be in the way of people seeing. And uh, as you can see, another one of these results was that 27 to 45% of people with DME um, responded well and had better vision with the anti-VEGF treatments. So this means that the shots that they were given worked, but uh, 30 to 40% of them didn't respond at all. So this kind of showed that that anti-VEGF like resistance could be an indicator of what's going on, what kind of diabetic retinopathy you have. And the study also identified these uh, genetic variants and as you can see, there's a couple of different genes and um, some of them, this one, a couple of them activate VEGF and different other things. And then the one gene at the bottom here, the phenotype is diabetic retinopathy protection, but all the other ones are diabetic retinopathy progression, meaning that you're probably gonna have this issue if you're diabetic and basically your diabetes will cause vision loss. So basically, um, more research is needed figuring out why anti-VEGF treatment doesn't work. And um, it'll likely be needed that multi-generational clinical studies will be needed because the study did find that you were three times more likely to have PDR if there's a familial history of PDR. So basically, um, now that people are going to more doctors and this is getting caught more often, it would be really helpful to have like a multi-generational study of a family with this and then analyzing the genes that go into it because they did identify some genes, but they're not fully comprehensive. And it's basically a really complicated issue because you're dealing with types of diabetes, um, other family medical history, and then this condition that develops as a result of diabetes and then all the different things that can happen with it. So basically that's it. Um, if anyone has any questions, let me know. <clears throat> yeah, I have a question if I, if I may ask. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, so um, do you know exactly how the VEGF works exactly? Is it just like a liquid they put in your eye and like hope the swelling goes down of the vessel or like how does it work specifically? Yeah, so the VEGF is basically like the fluid or leaking like blood vessels in the eye. And so the anti-VEGF treatment is an injection into the eye and it basically the medicine is supposed to like clear up the leaking blood vessels and kind of 
move away blood vessels so there's not as much swelling on the macula because that's what causes the um, loss of vision. So basically little medicine particles go in and kind of clean up everything that's floating around in that like vitreous, which is the inner gel of your eye and stuff like that. Like if things are floating around in there, you might see floaters, different things like that. And the medicine's job is to go in and kind of fix the leak. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Um, Samuel, Samuel asked in the chat, when was the study done? Uh, this study was done in 2013. So obviously, doctors and science have come quite a way since then, but um, there aren't a ton of recent studies on this because it takes about seven to 10 years to develop. So it's kind of hard to do a short-term study. Um, so I'm hoping more studies are coming out soon, but I don't know. Um, I'm sorry if I didn't get this, but are you saying it's like, um, was this a treatment or was this like a disease type of thing? Um, so uh, DR is a disease and one of the treatments for it is the anti jab. So this study looked at progression of that disease and why the treatment doesn't work for a lot of people. Okay, so does the disease cause blindness basically? If left untreated, eventually it can cause blindness, but mm -hmm. for most people, you just get decreased vision like as it gets worse. Oh, okay. Are there any known treatments to it besides this? Like obviously this doesn't work, but is there any other treatments? Um, right now it's just the injections and there's different like types of medicines mm -hmm. that you can get injected. So there's like steroid types, and like other things like that, but there's no treatment other than the injection so far. Okay. Well, maybe there's some more studies out there now that um, it's like a lot later. Yeah, I'm hoping to find more stuff on it. It's kind of a niche subject, <laughs> but I thought it was interesting. No, it is really interesting. I've never, um, I've like been in, like I get really dry eyes. So I've always like wondered why. And actually one of my friends had a really interesting procedure where they, her eyes were so dry that um, instead of like liquid, it was basically solid. So she had to go get her like um, eye liquid melted so that it could like be not dry anymore. I feel like eye diseases are so different than everything else. Yeah, they're kind of crazy. And <laughs> I see in the chat, there's a question asking if surgery can fix the VEGF and kind of to some extent, it can't really stop it from coming back. But if there's enough blood floating around in the vitreous, sometimes surgery is needed to go in and like clean it out. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of an invasive procedure. So usually, I mean, as horrible as getting a shot in your eye sounds, that's usually what people go with first. I don't know. I, I've always wanted to get LASIK, but it just seems so scary to get like anything put into your eye, like a laser or shots. I'd be very scared. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't hurt. Like I work in ophthalmology and we put like a lot of numbing in the eye so you don't feel it, but it's still kind of scary. Do they numb it with eye drops or do they numb it with another like injection? Um, They numb it with eye drops and um, there's like a little like we call them pledgets, which is like a piece of cotton that's soaked in like paracaine. And we can put that like a little bit under the eyelid and kind of let it sit so it numbs like the whole eye. Oh, okay. So that's not invasive. I think that would help a lot though. Um, and then someone asked if it's actually Rishi asked if it's um, a chronic thing or can it can there be more than one one in your eye? Um so VEGF is just kind of like a liquid. So I guess there can be more or less of it, but not more than one, I think. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, you can have different like leaks and bleeding from different blood vessels. Um, but yeah, it's usually chronic and like a lot of people don't respond to treatment and will eventually go blind or be very close to blind. Mm -hmm. So um, did you learn about this disease because you work in ophthalmology? Yeah, so I work with the retina specialist and this is one of the things that we look at and treat. Oh. So that's kind of how I got interested in it and how I learned about it. What do you do at the ophthalmology clinic? Um, I'm a like ophthalmic technician. So what I do is, is I get the patients and I like do the preliminary tests on them before they see like the main doctor. So I'll do a vision test, check their inner ocular pressure, like record um, any medications, their medical history, find out what their symptoms are. It's kind of like when you go to the doctors and the nurse comes in first before the doctor. Right. Like that's kind of my job. And I take like photo scans of the eye, basically get all the information ready for the doctor to look at and decide what she wants to do. And if they're getting a shot or a treatment, I'll like put the numbing in for them, stuff like that. Wow, that's actually really interesting. Ophthalmology is such a cool field. Um, are there any other questions about the research or any other eye procedures? <laughs> All right, in that case, Lexi, thank you so much for your amazing presentation and knowledge in general about like eyes and other procedures. Um, um, we'll have a blog post and this YouTube video up in about a week and we'll send that in our update email. Um, and that's all for this meeting. Sorry for the very short meeting, but hopefully you guys get some extra time to do whatever it is. Oh, wait. Oh, there's one more question. Do holistic lifestyle changes have a positive effect on DR? That was asked by Hassan. Um, Yes, so that can help. It's kind of because it's directly tied to diabetes. Um, like some things like eating healthier, managing your blood sugar and diabetes, like eating like leafy greens, things like that um, will decrease your likelihood of getting this or at least delay the onset of it and kind of make it not as bad. So if your diabetes is uncontrolled and you're not living a healthy life, then this is probably gonna be worse of an issue than if you're doing everything you can to control your diabetes, like eating healthy, exercising, all that stuff. Um, in the same sense, if you, uh, like some people reverse their diabetes, um, could, then would you not be at risk for having this disease? Or is it like, if you, are diabetic at one point, you'll always be more at risk for this. Um, I think if you are diabetic at one point, you're still more at risk, but if you reverse your diabetes, it's way less of a chance that this will be an issue. Okay. Oh. And uh, now we can, yes. Okay, I, was, I had another question. Um, because this is like due to uh, leakage from a, a blood vessel in the eye, do you know if there's any like interventional procedure research being done where like very small catheters or something are used to try and to try and like affect this disease, or are the blood vessels in the eye too delicate, too small to like undergo interventional like surgery? So as far as I know. Um... We like I don't know of any surgeries where things like that are happening because everything in the eye is so small and delicate and like any procedure you kind of risk losing complete vision. Um, that doesn't mean that there's not research going on somewhere for procedures like this. It's just not mainstream. No, that makes sense. I feel like it's hard to find research about a niche topic. I know Zaino's here. I know it's hard to find uh, research about Delphia girl. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. <laughs> but yeah. All right. Any last questions? Um, all right. Um, in that case, I think we should wrap up this meeting and we'll see you guys in two weeks for our 
very last meeting. Um, so good luck with your uh, last set of midterms, guys, and see you in two weeks. Bye. Bye.